Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be going over how to create some 3D shapes or 3D looking shapes using a couple quick tricks in Figma. Hopefully you'll be able to use these uh, in whatever website or application you're building uh, or even poster design if you decide to do that in Figma. So yeah, let's jump into it. So this is an idea of what we're going to end up with at the end. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do is just create yourself a frame over here. Uh, call it whatever you want. Let's call it for this tutorial. Uh, 3D shape. Uh, then what we're going to do from here is use our R tool to draw some rectangles. Alternatively, you could come up here in the toolbar, but always try to remember to use your hotkeys because it really speeds things up. Uh, from there, we're going to draw a shape that's approximately uh, this large. If you want to be sure to get the exact shape that I get, you can copy these uh, <clears throat> width and height values over here. Um, but then we'll just duplicate the shape and shrink it down. Um, as long as it's approximately the same size as this, uh, these values are going to work. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but yeah, we'll start with something like that. Maybe bring it down a little bit more. Uh, I'm holding the option key to scale evenly on both the left and right size. Uh, alternatively, you could do option shift, which will uniformly scale across the whole thing, or just uh, click and drag to do one side. Uh, but I want a uniform shape for this one. So once we have our two rectangles drawn, what we're gonna do is come up here uh, and click Union Selection, which is gonna turn those two shapes into one individual shape. From there, what we'll do is uh, make sure we have our shape selected and come up here to round all of our corners. Um, so basically just round this until it won't round anymore. Uh, it doesn't matter the exact value. From here, once we have our corners rounded, we can make some adjustments to the fill. So for this shape, what we're going to do is create a radial gradient. So you'll come over here to your fill, uh, come over and select gradient, and then in this drop-down, click radial. We're going to move these points to approximately here and here. Uh, I like to have a slight angle on these shapes, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, but then the next thing that we're going to do is go on to this last point and then instead of having it be 0%, change it to 100% because it automatically defaults to 0%. I already have my colors selected over here so I don't have to fiddle around too much in the video. Um, so you can either copy these exactly or create your own. But uh, what we'll do is uh, mess with this first point. So we will select the square, making sure it's highlighted in blue, and grab this eyedropper tool which will change it to this hex code. Then we'll click somewhere else on the line, approximately here, to get our next color. Again, just come back to this eyedropper, which we'll grab that color. Again, we're gonna add one more point here and get our eyedropper tool to get this third color. Then for our fourth, we will, again, just come back to our eyedropper tool and grab this fourth color. Uh, if you wanna copy these codes exactly, you'll see that they appear over here in our swatch panel. Um, but feel free to experiment on your own too. Uh, this is a really fun way to create unique color palettes. Uh, what I'm gonna do is drag this in so that we see that we're getting just on the edge of the shape over here and over here, our darkest point. Uh, maybe pull this slightly over here so we're making sure that we get our darkest point on the shape itself. Great, now that we have our fill all set, we'll close out this panel. Uh, and this is what we're working with now. Zoom in a bit. Uh, from here what we're going to do is create some effects. So we'll come over here to our effects panel and we're going to add three effects. Uh, all of these are going to be inner shadows. So we'll hit the drop down and click inner shadow. And then each of these uh, are going to have a slightly different effect applied to them. Uh, so for each of them, they will all have a zero for the Y value. Um, the first one's going to have a 50 for the blur. And for the color, what we're going to do is, uh, for the, the bottom layer, we do a slightly off-white about there, and then make sure that this is at 100%. And then for the next one, what we'll do is come up here, going to make sure we have our Y value to zero, our blur. This time we're going to do 75. And uh, for our color, let's make it 100%. And then we will come to more of a slightly warmer tone, something around this area. Um, these are going to get slightly darker as we go up. Uh, okay, cool. So we'll close that out. Uh, and then we'll mess with our last inner shadow here. 
Again, let's make this 100%, make this Y value zero. This time the blur is going to be 100, and we will do even slightly darker yet, so maybe somewhere around here. Uh, and then to finish this off, what we'll do is change the blend mode for these top two. So we'll click the settings and over to blend mode, then we'll drop down to overlay. And we'll do the same for the second one, the middle layer, click overlay, and then we kind of have our, our shape here. Um, so you get a nice light highlighter on the edge. Um, you know, if you want to play with any of these colors, maybe you decided that this, this middle one you want a little bit brighter, uh, you'll get a, a brighter edge on this, uh, maybe somewhere around there. Maybe it's the same for the top one. Maybe you want it a little bit brighter. Um, but yeah, feel free to play around with these values to, to get different looks if you want to do so. For me, I think I want this a little darker yet. And you can even play with this first layer um, and come back a little bit more if you want it slightly darker. Um, yeah, all these values are super easy to play with. Uh, same thing with the gradient. If you want to adjust any of the gradient values, you just open up your gradient swatch. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, super easy to duplicate this shape. If you want to you know, move it around, play with, play with different forms, um, you can adjust individual values by double clicking on individual shapes. Um, and yeah, play around, see what you get. Uh, hopefully this helps you experiment with some new techniques and some, uh, some new tools within Figma. All right guys, thanks for stopping by uh, and checking out this video. If you found it helpful, it would be awesome if you would leave a like. And if you're interested in more content like this in the future, uh, it would be awesome if you'd stick around and subscribe to the channel. If you want to show me some of your work that you've created using this tutorial, it would be awesome if you would link it down below in the comments. And uh, I'd love to check it out. Again, thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.